Hi guys, this is Lena at Gradelink. Thanks again for joining me for the financial webinar video series. This is video 14 in our series. In the last video, we learned about how to manually add a charge into the ledger, and now I want to show you how to add a payment into the ledger. And um, it's actually a very similar process to adding in a charge. So we're still looking here at Picasso's ledger. Uh, we see the charges listed above. So when I'm ready to add a payment, I simply click in the date box. And I can navigate back and forth if I need to put in a payment from a past date. Just keep in mind that the date has to fall in the open billing period. So if you need a refresher on what billing periods are, just um, take a look at that video. But currently, I know that I have the April billing period open. And let's say that I want to put a payment in for the 18th. I can just select the date. And then the session would be the 2014-2015 session. The transaction type is the critical piece here. I need to select the one that is a payment. So I have a couple different options here. I have a lunch payment. I also have a registration payment and a tuition payment set up. And if you'll recall, these um, options in this dropdown are what we configured on the fee types page. So I already indicated on the fee types page that a tuition payment is a payment on the student's account. So in the amount box, I don't need to put in a negative or anything like that. Gradelink already knows that this is money that's credited towards the student's account because on the other page I indicated this as a payment. So I would just type the amount that the parent paid in the amount box. And now I have um, these boxes on the, on the right side here become a little bit more relevant. So I'm going to choose the payment method. Let's say that it was a check. I could put a reference number in here if I'd like, maybe a check number. And I could also put a memo in here. So maybe they, um, maybe they sent in a check. And I just click Save. And immediately I see the payment listed up top here, the date that I input the payment, the payment uh, title, the amount of the payment. Here you'll see the negative that it was a payment, and then the new balance and the memo. So a couple things. The reason why it was inserted kind of into the middle of all these is because of the date. So these are ordered on the date of the transaction. So the 18th fell in between these other two transactions. The amount column is referring to the amount of the payment. The new balance column is the running total for the student. So the student um, here at the first charge, they owed $200. The next item was a $50 charge, which increased their balance to $250. So as of April 16th, the student owed $250. Then I input a payment for $500, even though at this point in time, on the 18th, the student only owed $250. So if they paid $500, then basically they overpaid by $250. And so we can see that reflected here by a negative in the new balance column. So a negative balance means that the student or parent has paid more than they actually owed, and in this case, $250 more. But then I can see that on the 21st, there was a charge of 420 and so now the student again owes $170. So this new balance column is always your running total. Um, all right, guys, that is how to enter a payment into the student ledger. Stay tuned for the next video, and I'm going to talk about how to input a scholarship in the student's account.